it's very different putting butter on your bagel than putting butter on your broccoli. Mostly I would get rid of the safflower, sunflower, corn oil, peanut oil, anything that has vegetable oil. In terms of butter, lard, you know, a coconut oil, saturated fats are generally okay for most people, especially if you have poor metabolic health. They seem to just do better when people are insulin resistant. There's a subset of people, they're called lean mass hyper responders. I'm one of them. If I eat too much saturated fat, it, it actually adversely affects my lipids. And then what often happens with saturated fat, especially coconut oil, for example, it raises your LDL, but it also raises your HDL, which is the good cholesterol. And overall, your profile gets better. So it's a little more nuanced than we were led to believe. Now, we were all taught when I was a kid that vegetable oil, and by the way, what the hell is vegetable oil? You see vegetable oil in a bottle in a store, you go to that broccoli oil. <laughs> I mean, that just does not even exist. So we're talking about seed and bean and nut oils, like soybean oil, canola oil, safflower oil, corn oil, canola oil. These are all these oils that are out there. And there, by the way, there is something called vegetable oil which you can buy in the grocery store i have no idea what that is <laughs> anyway i wouldn't eat that uh, we're all trained that they're better for you and that we should be avoiding butter and saturated fat and animal fats and so there's been a big push to shift our diet from consuming more saturated fats to more unsaturated fats and saturation unsaturation it just it's a chemical classification based on how many of the uh, you know, sort of carbons are saturated with hydrogen on a fat molecule. So the more saturated it is, the more uh, hard it is at room temperature, the more hydrogens there are. It's basically just basically the classification system. But basically, they have different functions in your body. And basically, we're told that we should not be eating these saturated fats. They cause high cholesterol. They, they clog our arteries. They lead to heart disease. And basically, we're told to swap out saturated for unsaturated fats or called PUFAs, or the omega-6 fatty, fatty acids in these vegetable oils, or quote vegetable oils. <laughs> um, and they're, they're everywhere. They're kind of clear cases. They're highly refined. They're processed with hexane. They're deodorized. They're, uh, I mean, they're really um, extremely highly processed foods. Now, some like olive oil, extra virgin olive oil, there's a simple pressing. You can do it with like a machine. It's like a press, and it squeezes the oil out. That's a very different thing than the kind of aggressive extraction methods they use for modern um, processed um, plant oils now the the um these oils are by definition unstable right if you take lard and you keep it at room temperature and you leave it there for two months it's fine if you take a, a plant oil and you leave it out it's going to become oxidized so it becomes very easily damaged they're more unstable more easily damaged more oxidized more oxidation leads to more inflammation and they can be problematic uh and so uh, you know these oils can be more inflammatory but th there's certain caveats we'll talk about in, in that context um but the american heart association the national education and cholesterol program the national institutes of health and even our government's own dietary guidelines are telling us to swap out saturated fat for these unsaturated fats or these these plant oils and a lot of well-respected doctors and scientists have been telling us this for a long long time and we've been listening <laughs> uh it turns out it's not so clear-cut we're we were talking about why we should maybe change our perspective and be a little more nuanced about this uh, black and white thinking is not helpful in any subject particularly nutrition and, and and so really, is it all or nothing? Should we like eliminate completely plant oils from our diet? Which oils should we 100% eliminate? Which oils can we include somewhat? Should we be eating only saturated fat like coconut oil and butter and lard? I mean, what is the right answer here? And I wrote a whole book about this called Eat Fat, Get Thin. You want to go into more more detail about it. But essentially, we're a little bit confused and it's not, not surprising because there was an article, for example, in 2010 from Tufts University that concluded there's a lot of benefit from cutting out saturated fat and increasing our intake of polyunsaturated fatty acids are the PUFAs or these plant oils. Now, uh, the same group <laughs> looked in 2014 at a meta-analysis of all the literature, kind of looking at 72 different studies. Uh, I think it was published in the Annal of Internal Medicine. They found no benefit to reducing saturated fat for cardiovascular disease or increased 
polyunsaturated fats, except there was a benefit for increasing omega-3 fats. So this is really key is the omega-3 fat piece is really important. Omega-3 fats are basically from wild food, wild fish, um, wild plants. Uh, we don't eat that much anymore, but omega-3s are really important for our brain function, our skin health, our immune health, inflammation regulation, so many different things. And it usually comes from wild fish at this point. Sardines are one of the best sources. So, so we should be paying attention to that. But we're, we're not um, easily clear about this because there's so much conflicting data and, and experts can't seem to agree. You know, we, like you've got, you know, top nutrition uh, scientists out there. I think one thing and from the NIH and another group that thinks the opposite. So like, how do we even begin to sort of come up with what, what actually makes sense here in terms of what's the, the truth. And that's what I want to kind of unpack today a little bit. So, um, you know, the basic idea is that if you if you consume these PUFAs, these polyunsaturated fatty acids, it lowers LDL cholesterol, which is true. If you basically cut out saturated fat and you add in these plant oils, these seed and bean oils, you will tend to have a lower LDL cholesterol. But is that enough to recommend that we should be doing this? And I think it's confusing because, uh, you know, Lowering LDL is not necessarily the, the, the key to reversing heart disease. It has to do with a lot of factors, insulin resistance, um, oxidation, inflammation, and so forth. So there was one really quite amazing study that, and, and, and I'm going to sort of preface this by saying that most of the studies that we're looking at these polyunsaturated fats are observational studies, population studies. Some are interventional studies where you can do a trial and get an answer about cause and effect. But and they're, they're, they're a little hard to sort of decipher because, you know, in studies, for example, where people are eating a lot of saturated fat, they're also eating a lot of sugar and starch. And, you know, it's very different putting butter on your bagel than putting butter on your broccoli. Because when you put butter on your bagel, you're adding starch and saturated fat, and that's deadly. Adding butter to your broccoli, not so much a problem. <laughs> so if you really have a low intake of starch and sugar and set you eat saturated fats, it won't necessarily be a big of an issue. And there's some genetics that have to do with who can tolerate saturated fat. And I, I don't know if we'll get it, have time to get into that today, but uh, it, it's a little more nuanced. But basically, it's it's not necessarily only the saturated fat. It's what you're eating it with. So if you cut out starch and sugar, saturated fats don't seem to be, to be the boogeyman. And you can, you can have a good look at my book. There's some increasing uh, knowledge about this since my book was released. Uh, I think it was in 2016, maybe. Uh, you can get a sense of, of really, you know, where this is at, though, by having a look at the book. But the other the other problem is a lot of the studies looking at omega-6s, omega-3s, polyunsaturated fats were confusing because they combined different types of oil. For example, certain oils like corn oil, safflower oil, peanut oil are plant oils, but they're almost entirely omega-6, whereas other oils like canola or soybean oil have a mixture of omega-6 and omega-3. So when you look at the data, people who just consume the omega-6s but no omega-3s had far worse outcomes, had far worse uh, outcomes in terms of heart attacks and, and death. So we know that's not good just to have omega-6 oils by themselves, especially in a society that's omega-3 deficient. So we basically used to eat a lot of wild stuff and have a ratio of omega six to three, about four to one, two to one. Now it can be up to 20 to one. I had a patient who was diabetic, heart failure, very overweight, really ate junk food all the time. And her ratio was 20 to one, which is just a disaster. Very low omega threes, very high omega sixes. So you have to be kind of not just lump all the plant oils into one bucket. You have to kind of be a little more nuanced and you can actually look online as a table, I think on Wikipedia showing the ratios of omega six and three for every plant oil. So you can kind of stick away from the ones like corn oil. So there was a study that was done. And then I always want to talk about this for a minute. It was a really important study. It was done in the 60s. You couldn't do that study now. It's unethical. But it was done in a, in a psychiatric hospital where they had complete control over their diets. And they gave one group butter and one group as their source of fat and one group corn oil. Now, the corn oil group, even though they had a lower LDL cholesterol, dramatically lower, for, there was a higher risk of heart attacks and stroke and death. Compared, and it was a randomized controlled trial, which is really hard to do on like 9,000 people. It's just impossible to do that because you have to lock people up 
to do this, right? And people don't want to be locked up. So this was the locked up people, basically, who were able to be experimented on before ethics rules. And they, and they found this incredible result, which was the opposite of what we thought. And it was buried by the scientists who did the study because they couldn't believe it. So they didn't actually publish it. And it was funded by the government, and they should have published it. And it was some guy finding a bunch of files in a basement like 40 years later that finally kind of assembled the data and published the study. And it was it was really quite an impressive study. And it really showed that if you're just looking at pure omega-6 and comparing that to saturated fat, that the omega-6 did far worse, even though they lowered the LDL cholesterol more. Than the, than, than, and, and, and that was dramatic. So I think, I think that's just an important cautionary note. If you're consuming these oils, make sure you have enough omega-3s in your diet. Um, so you really, I think, um, you know, looking at historically, we used to get these omega-6 oils from foods we ate, from beans, from seeds, from grains, from, you know, basically we would get these from the plants we ate, nuts, and and they're fine, and they're fine to consume from the whole food sources. I don't have anywhere. If you want to have corn, it's got corn oil in it. If you want to have, you know, a peanuts, eat the peanuts. You know, don't eat the peanut oil. Don't eat the corn oil. If you want to use some expeller or cold-pressed organic non-GMO soybean or canola oil, I think I think it's probably okay in small amounts as long as you're getting enough omega-3s. And omega-3s are more in the soy and canola oil. But most canola and soybean oil are GMO. Most of them are sprayed with glyphosate. Most of them are highly refined, deodorized, and um, processed in ways that may make them more harmful. So it's really nuanced, but it's not like, oh, soybean and canola are okay. No, they're okay if they're made in a certain way and they come from a certain place and they're not GMO and they're they're uh, not overly processed in certain ways that we talked about, we just talked about. So I think that's that's an important distinction. Also, if you want to get more omega-3s in your diet, you can eat wild fish like sardines, herring, mackerel, anchovies. If you want to eat wild food like wild uh, bison, wild elk, wild um, kind of uh, deer, you can buy these now. They're raised and they're fed their natural diets. Regenerally raised cows can also be higher in omega-3s and lower in omega-6s. So it's really possible to do that. I think it's really important. For example, Wild uh, meat and grass-fed beef contain about seven times as much omega-3s as industrially raised animals, which have almost none. And, uh, you know, most of what our grandparents ate were pasture-raised, regenerative, organic, grass-fed, and they didn't get hormones, antibiotics. There was nothing else to eat. Uh, so getting getting refined oils in our diet, I think, been a problem as a society, particularly because we've kind of limited omega-3s and because we've had all these refined processes. So. I would be very careful about consuming too much of just pure omega-6 fats. You can check your ratio. You can go on, um, go to functionhealth.com. You can actually get a membership. And one of the tests we check for is your omega uh, index, which looks at all of your essential fatty acids, omega-3s, omega-6s, and saturated fat. And we can get a really picture of where you're at. You want to know what's happening and not guess. Um, the other problem is if you eat too much of the omega-6s, it actually inhibits the conversion of the plant-based omega-3s, so if you're, let's say you're in walnuts or chia seeds or flax seeds that have omega-3s, uh, which have ALA or alpha-linolenic acid, it, it actually prevents the conversion by inhibiting an enzyme called delta-60 saturase, which is necessary for the conversion of the omega-6s, I mean omega-3s that are in the plant form, ALA, to the omega-3s that we need for our brain and to regulate inflammation and for everything else, which is called EPA and DHA, and it can, reduces that conversion. So it's, there's many reasons that it kind of interferes with things. So I, I would basically avoid consuming too much of this. There's been some population studies showing that high levels of omega-6s can contribute to more inflammatory diseases, can cause more mental illness, suicide, homicide. This is um, work out of the NIH. Um, so I think Dr. Joseph Hiblin has done a lot of this work. You can look at his research. It's quite interesting. And it's a bit nuanced, so you have to kind of dig into it. It took me a long time to figure it out because I was trying to, you know, cut through the noise of what, what I was hearing, you know, in the, in, from this so this paper or that paper or this expert or that expert. And, you know, everybody was contradicting everybody else. So I'm like, I want to look at the literature myself. And, and basically, I concluded what I just shared with you. And so you want to get rid of these things. Um, and and uh, uh, I think I think we really are – unfortunately overloaded in these oils i think we should be limiting them we should be only probably using 
my my favorite oils, which are extra virgin expeller pressed uh, um, or cold pressed oils, uh, extra virgin olive oil. MCTL is okay, actually, um, has a very limited limited uh, effect on your uh, on your cholesterol at all. It's anti-inflammatory, may help improve your metabolism and cholesterol. Uh, avocados are great. Grass-fed meats are great. Grass-fed butter. Uh, nuts are great. You know, walnuts, almonds, pecans, macadamia. You know, seeds are great. Chia seeds, flax seeds, hemp seeds, uh, pumpkin seeds. All fine fatty fish, uh, sardines, mackerel, herring, wild salmon, full of omega-3 fats. So it's really important to, to get your oils right in your diet, to get the right kind of oil change, to make sure you're not eating too much of these refined oils, to make sure you're having, if you're having any of the plant oils, that you make sure they're, uh, you know, limited quantities are using basically the the combination oils that are soy or canola that are not GMO that are organic and so forth. And also add in, you know, you can add in different oils for like macadamia oil or walnut oil or, you know, almond oil. You can cook with these things. You can use them for flavoring. They're different things, but they shouldn't be staples. Uh, and uh, my staple oils are basically extra virgin olive oil. I use avocado oil. I use a little ghee and butter, uh, grass-fed butter, and a little bit of coconut oil sometimes. So that, that's basically uh, makes it really simple. But I think we should be aware that this is a complex topic. We're still learning about it. If you love that last video, you're going to love the next one. Check it out here. I was talking to a patient yesterday and she was struggling with her sleep and wanted to the medications. I'm like, tell me about your day. She goes, well, I have two kids. I, you know, read in bed and I, I, I basically put them to bed and then I work. And then I get on my computer, I do emails, I deal with all my obligations, commitments.